What the hell? Was it all a dream? Joffrey. Mr. Magnetic. Rosette. None of them were real? It doesn't matter. I'm home now. I guess I can review things like I used to. Originally, I wanted to talk about Batman Beyond to finish off my 2000s DC retrospective, but I decided I can't do it. I can't. I'm too overexposed and burnt out on these hero shows, and now every blockbuster is superhero related too? No! I want to listen to some old songs from my childhood. Ones that just bring me comfort. Something from a simpler time. Something nostalgic. <sighs> How about those old lists I used to do? Something good and old-fashioned. I know people don't take kindly to me talking about music, but I really need this right now. Top 10 Nostalgic Songs. This will not include pop music, will not feature pure instrumentals, and will not feature anything live-action because I've always been attracted to the fantastical. So, animation and video games. I need a transitional song. Well, this wouldn't qualify, and tis the season. The Pokemon theme, the Mewtwo Strikes Back version. The Pokemon theme is iconic. It represents everything about the series with a simple goal. Be the best there is and catch as many of them as you can. And the lyrics fit so much. Well, maybe not about defending the world, cause like, you go out to Pokemon gyms and then later to the league. No world saving there, unless you count all the movies with the same Ash meets Legendary formula. Unfortunately, the original theme song suffers from really generic instrumentation and vocal performance. Now, the remix theme from the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back, is actually full of emotion. Maybe even a little too much. Has a far superior singer, and has less stinging instrumentation that's easier and softer to listen to. The full version not included in the film actually comes with a nice guitar solo in the middle. It helps that this piece is accompanied by a good fight without the Pokemon battle thing where they just scream each other's attacks that they want to do. In fact, when it cuts to the dialogue, it feels jarring as hell. The fights also showcase the heavily improved animation for these films, like the bubble beam and the solar beam, to say, yes, this is the real deal. Unfortunately, the film is kind of really stupid in its plot and moral, at least as a result of 4Kids localization taking out many of the smarter elements of the film. But if you like Pokemon, you won't care, especially since Mewtwo Strikes Back has a phenomenal soundtrack. Also, I know Brother My Brother is popular. Look, it's not a bad song, but its placement is just so wrong. Okay, fighting. A brutal fight to the death between Pokemon, and they bust this out. A song that would only fit if they were the closest of friends. Where the song ended in the film, the part where the Pokemon lost the will to fight, that would have been a much better place to play it than where the song actually played. I really enjoyed Fairly Our Parents' Schools Out the Musical. It had good rock opera songs about childhood enjoyment, a feeling of endless summer, being yourself, etc. It was a fun and funny movie. And what's with the floating? We have that kind of money. Walking is for poor people. The best and most emotional song is the one halfway through, Where is the Fun? Timmy, at his most powerless, has to beg Flappy Bob, the man who is basically declaring war on childhood fun, and that he screwed over earlier with his child rule wish. Timmy's also trying to tell the guy that he's a pawn of the Pixies as well. I like this song because both Timmy and Flappy Bob give emotional deliveries of their lines. Timmy really is in the begging position, and Flappy Bob is having a conflict about how the world should be, and whether or not he could grant fun to children when his own childhood was misery. Also, the musical's thing of switching out Ben Stein's voice for two MCs whose names I can't even pretend to know was a good choice to contrast and add more variety to this particular song. There is not focus on large numbers of backup singers, this is a character-based piece about the main characters of this story, and it sounds great. I like it the most out of the series. Brains! From Grim and Evil. Back when Billy and Mandy was a way darker and cynical show like Invader Zim before it went for more silly and pop cultural stuff, we had the semi-popular musician Voltaire play an evil alien meteor who wants to absorb people's brains. It's a gothic sounding swing s song, and the instrumentation rocks, with a great fiddle dominating the track throughout, and brasses take over the spotlight later in the piece. There's also a witty ass alien. Basically it disses the hell out of his first few victims in a very manipulative manner. It's awesome. 
go down to your neighbor's place See the dull expression on his face You'd be doing him a favor if you brought him to me He ain't using his brain, he's just watching TV And there's a middle part devoted to how he likes his brains It's just grotesque and really cool Maybe it's a result of such a strange genre like Dark Cabaret being introduced to me from such a young age, but this song really stuck with me. Also, the subject matter is pretty memorable. It's a villain song about a monster that likes eating brains. What other song is about that? The music video is half thriller parody and part Y7 horror, with a fairly frightening monster that eats brains pretty graphically for a children's television series. Live and Learn from Sonic Adventure 2 Sonic Adventure 2 was the game that introduced Rouge the Bat and more famously Shadow the Hedgehog. The game was pretty good, though often the camera hates you. It hasn't aged that well, but it was pretty good for its time. The song plays at the climax of Sonic Adventure 2, where you fight a giant synthetic lizard that's going to crash into the earth to kill everyone, so both Sonic and Shadow have to use the power of the Chaos MacGuffins to go Super Saiyan and battle it in space. That is the setting to this song. You spent an entire game fighting each other, and Shadow is about to carry out his revenge for Maria Robotnik, a human girl he legitimately loved when he was being experimented on. And he was talked out of it by the last minute, but that's when the bio lizard came in. This song itself is one that gets people pumped and has a large stake feel to it. Good job, Crush 40. It's the main theme of the game, but it plays appropriately for the final battle. The guitar and drums are simply great in this song, giving that feeling that the whole world's counting on you to save them from the legacy of a madman. The lyrics are admittingly not great, they're kinda generic, but it's the proper type of generic quotes that help you get fighting. The game has plenty of good songs, like City Escape played in the first level, and its lyrics make no sense, Supporting Me played in the second to last boss, and it's really dark and cool sounding, and For True Story, which is the last battle for the hero in Dark Stories, and it's nice for the fast paced space battle it's set to. All of them were of similar quality, but Live and Learn stands as the most memorable. Throwdown from Class of 3000 I like Andre 3000, I find him one of the most talented musicians of our day, and I think he totally deserves his fame, unlike some others. His series, Class of 3000, when I was young, was not my thing at all, but it had nice music. My favorite song was Throwdown, a song about everyone enjoying themselves with Andre's genre blending. The song is just so full of energy from the background, and the chorus is so packed with life. The beat is nice as well, highlighting Andre's production and the enjoyment the song resonates. Not sure why it's called Throwdown though, cause like, Throwdown implies a fight and there's not really much of that. Also, whenever I get to the end, I hear the part where the forgettable children introduce themselves. I like to imagine Andre is doing a rap verse there like, I don't know, this one from the Gorilla song, Do Ya Thing. That one's awesome. The music video that came on Cartoon Network to promote the show was full of trippy colors, off-looking character models dancing. It's weird, but I kind of like it. It's very pleasing to the eyes, and is a nice supplement. Except that! That's creepy as hell. This song is very sweet and, dare I say, lovely against one of the most frightening foes the Powerpuff Girls ever face. Really, it felt great to have a song about love overtake the life-sucking power of Mr. Mime. I'm not dense, I know the song is dumb, but it's really just a simple appeal. The power of love beats evil. Observing the beautiful colors of life and just feeling all the beauty through all forms of sensory, that's a nice message. Tara Strong helps with that Bubbles voice. The song is also catchy as hell, with some nice instrumentation, even though the Powerpuff Girls hands, they shouldn't even be able to play these instruments. Notably, the bass that entered the song early, and the following guitar solo is so awesome that Mr. Mind becomes Pennywise the Clown again. Then it goes into a vocal fugue. Unfortunately, the lyrics are at their weakest here. Especially Blossom, something about dogs and kitties. Buttercup repeats the chorus, Bubbles talks about using peace and giving flowers to solve her issues, and Blossom just starts bringing up doggies and kitties swimming or something. Look, they're cute and all, but come on. Also, try making a majority of cats swim. See how cute it looks. It's not like your sisters are spitting out some NOS quality stuff on the other side. You really shouldn't lose to them this badly, Blossom. Unfortunately, there's also the issue of dissonance. Not within the song, but 
you know, within the whole series and the immediate scene following. But... Yeah. Poor Jack from The Nightmare Before Christmas. This is my favorite Christmas song, by the way. The Nightmare Before Christmas is going back kind of far, but I don't care. I love the film, and this song is the absolute best it has to offer. It starts out as a sad ballad where Jack laments his failure to capture the spirit of Christmas because he just didn't get it. What have I done? What have I done? Done. How could I be so blind? And then it transitions, then completely races into a very inspirational and triumphant Screw everyone, I did what I wanted to do song, and God does it make a person want to give the finger to anyone giving them trouble. It's amazing what Jack Skeleton can accomplish by saying that he's Jack the Pumpkin King! Something that shouldn't even mean anything, and it does! The song works because Jack's manner and voice completely sell the emotions he's trying to sell. Whether regret, defiance, or genuine desire to change, the music's on Jack's side too, but it's not that worth noting compared to the lyrics and vocal delivery by Elfman himself. It's also an excellent use of a semi-reprise of the earlier song, Jack's Lament, that spoke of his desire for something new, and feels like a fitting way to make this a sequel song, if you will. The video direction is rudimentary, but incredibly effective. And for a moment, why I even touch the sky, and at least I left some stories they can tell I did. And for the first time since I don't remember when, I felt just like my old bony self again. In contrast to something like This Is Halloween, which was heavy on lots of movement, poor Jack just has simple snow, a static angel statue, and the far-off moon. And yet it's freaking beautiful, with the core cinematography in the first half just being a camera circling Jack. The fact that the background stay there just lets us absorb it better. I think I want to take a break. I'm getting kind of tired. If no wheel over us, we self throw What's this? Why does he have his power? The disruptor. Why can't I move? Rosette, we have to leave. Right now. I see you! You're not getting away! You monster! I... I will... Hey, is that the master? I'll take you all on! Let's go! <sighs> what do we do now? The disruptor didn't work on him? Somehow, he found a way to break out of it. He's gone mad. We can't win! Well, it says here that the telepathy generators are still intact enough. What's that going to mean for us? My directive is to serve and protect you, Lady Rosette, so I propose a solution. It appears victory is impossible, yes, but watch her. You can take her to Earth, let her start a new life, and you can resume yours. He'll never know. That's a surprisingly helpful plan, especially from you, Joffrey. I think we have to do it. No, I can't abandon my comrades! Please, madame, save yourself. You can still make a difference. I have to go. Where are you going? To serve and protect. What did you do? We're detached from the base. What happens now? The teleporter is fried. Let me see what I can do. Alright, it's charging now. It's going to take a while. Rosette, since we're going to be stuck here for a bit, there is one more video list I want to make. I don't care if it gets out. I would just really like you to be here for it, since it might really be my last. Why? Is this really the time? Did you see that monster that Cathalon turned into? The FF fleet has us surrounded! Please? Alright. By the way, Rosette, The Nightmare Before Christmas is a great watch. You should totally- <laughs> I think we've landed on a moon. Open the door! So, how is that teleporter? Almost ready. No! Stay back. They're mine. Lady Rosette, how nice it is to see you. Devon von Zandos. What do you want? To kill both of you. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> what are you gonna do? For me to death. Please. This is war. The real world. 
No place for stupid little disillusioned prissy boys. Come on, then. Get out of my way, you trash! <laughs> ah! No! Oh ho ho! He's later. You're first. <laughs> Come on! Fight back! Come on! <laughs> Hit me! <laughs> You're not making this any fun at all! Whatever. Your head will be a nice trophy on my mantle. Hey, Zandos. Meet my friend. I call him BFL. Guess what it stands for. You wouldn't dare. You're just a stupid little boy. What can- Yes, you guessed right. Stands for Big Freaking Laser. Yeah. Ugh. I just killed a man. Hey, what was that? At the ready, soldier. We'll wait for the captain's all clear. The plan sounds really dumb. Just shut up and hold position. Rosette, are you okay? The teleport is ready. Let's go to Earth. This time I want to show you my world. One that's not so nasty. I'm not endangering your world as well. Don't worry about it. Just sleep for a bit. You're safe. Alright, how did she teach me how to use this memory beam again? Your new name will be, um, Rose. You're a talented human on Earth, and you'll act like your true self. The self I see in you. You're a genius. Everything interests you, and no horrible conflict will make you put on that mask of ice. A history. For as long as you can remember. And now you're looking for that dream job. Alright, Rose. Time to go home. Where's that teleporter? Here it is. Good luck. <sighs> Not yet. One more thing has to be done. I need answers. And I guess I should finish this.